have some coffee. <laughs> I'm okay. I'm, I'm fine as well. Yeah. What time is it? Um, let me. You know, I don't know. Just quarter past eleven. Quarter past eleven. Uh, we brought some lunch with us for you. If, if, are you hungry at all? No. You're not hungry. I just right. had breakfast. Come on, you man. Had, well, you could have it I want breakfast. my leavens in. You can have it for breakfast. I want my leavens in. <laughs> Would you like some coffee or... He really was. In those days, this was called manic depression, and it really fitted him very well. I could see him... Uh, 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 as a sort of afterthought, sort of looking back on him as continually sort of climbing some tremendous evolutionary mountain and planting his flag on the top and, and not even stopping. He'd just go on climbing and climbing and climbing until he'd look down and see that he was 2,000 feet above the top of where he was climbing. And, ah! He'd give way and go down into the valley. Bah! He'd stay down there for about nine months in just a holler and slowly sort of make his way up again. And uh, I, I tend to this, this unhappy cycle of manic, uh, being very active at one time and after it's all worn out, going, well, you know, that wasn't good enough. I didn't, somehow it's gone wrong, something's happened. Well, would you attribute that to the burden of the Huxley name, do you think? I mean, did you, did you have a sense that you had to live up to something? Oh, yes, he was continually told as a child. In fact, all, all his brothers and sisters, all his brothers were as well, that they had a, their grandfather was the biggest thing in history since Adam, and that they had to at least try to live up to him, if not outdo him. And my father in particular... Uh, in his last year, he got into a terrible quarrel with... I hope you're not taking this down. I don't especially want this to be <laughs> filmed. Do you mind? Sure, fine, you, you want me to, I, I will turn it off you, if you like, but it's very, very interesting. It's, it is interesting. Okay, well, don't, don't give it out to everyone. No, we won't give it out to everyone. Family, family secrets and... about his underwear. Where's my underwear? I haven't got enough underwear. But Julian, you've got plenty. I looked in your drawer early this morning and you've got uh, two long johns and three vests. The, uh, the laundry is coming back tomorrow. You'll find another four in them and another of one and five of the other. You got plenty. No, I haven't got enough under. And this conversation went on for 15 minutes. I said, I'll come and have a look, I'll show you. There were even more uh, long drawns in the thing there. I said, just you see, uh, Julian, he, she said at one moment, I uh, overheard this, um, you've got a demon in you. I've known that since I was four years old, he replied. <laughs> Did he pass that on to you? Well, that's all part of the temperament, you know, you, uh, which affects everything in the family. Um, he was... Uh, he was very uncomprehending of what, who a woman like my mother was. I mean, she, he, the first present he gave her was a copy of the, a book he wrote that just published called The Individual and... Oh, I can't remember what. And which he inscribed to Juliette to open to open her not open her mind, use her mind or some educate her mind or something or something awful. And they were just got engaged. Can you imagine writing such a thing? And it was no wonder that their marriage sort of fell on very hard times then within 10 years, very hard times.